Hi everybody, it's John back again with another model inbox review. Today we're looking at, as you can see in front of you, a Vickers Vanguard commercial transport airliner. The kit subject for this review is actually the Airfix Sky King range, um, most recent release by Hornby Productions Limited of the Airfix Vickers Vanguard in 144th scale. We'll just go through the boxing history because this kit is actually, it's got a bit of history, it's quite old. Um, the original release of this kit was 1963, um, and it was about a year after Airfix started to release the Sky King range. And the thing that was interesting about the Sky King range is that they were um, they were some of the first companies to produce airliners in a constant scale of 144th, and the Vanguard was one of the aircraft releases released the year after the Sky King range was introduced. Um, and obviously, a lot of the airliners that were released in the early 60s were of the turboprop and very early um, generation uh, turbojet-powered airliners. And the Vanguard, um, I've never built this kit. I've built quite a few of the Sky King range kits in the past, but I've never built the Vanguard before. Um, so this should be an interesting kit. But the first release was actually of the Trans-Canada Airlines, which was one of the first customers that the Vanguard actually had. Um, so that, that was interesting. It's a shame you can't get this uh, livery today. It would be quite interesting to produce a model with this livery. In 1963, that was the Trans-Canada Airlines' first release, um, and that would have been on a type... I think that's... I, I'm not sure. I don't think this is actually an original Airfix England release boxing. Um, because it would have had the Sky King range logo on the on the bottom, but I think this might possibly be a Craftmaster release. It looks like a Craftmaster release boxing, but it's interesting. But anyway, 1963 goes to 1968. You have the red stripe boxing. This is a BEA livery, which is actually the same livery that comes with the uh, the, the most modern releasing boxings of this kit. Um, and there's something about this particular release that you don't get on the new release boxes and it's to do with the decals but I'll, I'll go through that um, when we go through the decals in a, in a minute. So that's the Red Stripe release 1968 then in 1973 you had the Type 4 boxings this is ones with the um, the logos on these little flashes on the front here. Um, interesting to note the price of this kit in 1973 was 34 pence and believe it or not Series 3 kits in 1973 were about 30, 32 to 36 pence throughout the year. I remember them going, there's a couple of adverts on the side of that box there. I think that's a Comet and that's the Trident 1C, which is interesting. Um, so that's 1973 and then you go to 1993, this is 20 years later, when you had the Classic Airliner Special Edition. Um, the one thing I want to say, and I've mentioned this in the conclusions section of this inbox review, and it's interesting that this image has come up, because this is one of the Heller released boxings issues of the Vanguard, and a lot of Sky King kits were actually introduced with this style of livery, where Heller realised that the decal application um, was quite difficult, for, especially for teenage children or even like elder um, eight to nine year olds and that was the age they were trying to aim a lot of their models at so they produced these airliners with much much easier liveries and British Airways um, and I think Danair was one of the other companies that they released a few models in I know the Comet came in a Danair livery at one time um, but they released them with liveries where you didn't have the strip of decals over the windows to have all the faff and palaver that you would have had um, in the early days with the BEA and the um, BOAC options that came up with Sky King. But that's 1993, this is the Heller Boxing um, Series 3, 144 scale Vickers Vanguard. And then you have the latest releasing, and this is actually the subject of the model inbox review that I'm doing today. This is the 2015 release of the Vanguard. It was released simultaneously with the, uh, the Comet 4B or was it 4C, I can't remember, um, which I've actually got in my stash as well to build. Um, and it's a shame that they haven't released a lot of the other airliners. I know they've done some of the jet-powered airliners, but it's a shame they haven't done some of the, like the Caravelle. It would have been nice to get hold of the Caravelle at one time. 
um, but I've actually got the Comet in my stash to do and I've also got the 737 and the 727 as well as the 707 to build um, yeah from the Airfix Sky King range that's 19, uh, 2015 the Hornby Productions release on the uh, the type I think this is a type 16 box now the red bordered Hornby Productions release and uh, I'm, I'm a good fan of these I think they, they advertise the Airfix product very well um, a quick view now at some of the options. There aren't many options because the Vanguard is quite a it's quite a rare aircraft. There weren't many of them made actually, probably less than a hundred or so, um, and they were built out, uh, brought out in the late 1950s, and their service career wasn't that long actually. Although they did serve some airliners 20 years later, for, for instance, in Victor International, which is one of the options here. Um, the Vanguards were serving them into the late 1970s and I think early 80s before they were relinquished from service. This is um, a, an option in 144 scale from a VAC form company called Former Plane. Um, VAC form kits, I've always found them a bit of a no-no for me. I never really got on with them very well. Um, I can't seem to get on with the, the way that you formulate the plastic and the airframe and everything. I should imagine the rest of the parts are probably okay, but the airframe and the, the wings and everything in vac form, it's just it, it's not really a very good idea for me. I didn't really get on with it. But former plane do the Vickers Vanguard 144th, and so does Welsh Models. They do two versions of this kit, actually, which is quite interesting. They do the pure vac form kit, which is SL117, um, in this kit, every part comes on two vac form sheets, airframe, propellers, everything. But they also do this kit, which is SL283P. And this kit has the fuselage in vac form with four discs, so I think they're the bulkheads. But the rest of the parts are all in resin, uh, which you have to remove and you know paint up yourself and apply. Now, this particular kit, is, again, is 144 scale, but I do want to talk again about Welsh, Welsh models in a, in a minute because uh, they, they're doing a pr production of this kit, which is quite serious. It'd be a seriously serious kit. But that's 144th option from Welsh models. That's a vac form and resin model. And in 72nd scale, yes, I'd said 72nd scale, you can actually get two options, one from this company called Gene Hooker Models, now, Gene Hooker, um, they produced a few limited runs of uh, modern airliners for the time during the 1970s. Um, and, of course, the Vanguard was still being produced. And this particular kit, although it's vac form and resin, is extremely nice. Very, very tricky to build, um, but an extremely nice model. And obviously, you can see from this image of this one that's been painted up and built, it can produce a really nice finished product. Um, but if you've got one of these or you want to, you fancy getting hold of one of these, the Gene Hooker kit, I, I wouldn't like to say how much they were. It wouldn't surprise me if they went for 500 quid. They're that rare now. Um, but that's, that's the Gene Hooker kit anyway, 72nd scale. But Welsh models, oh, sorry, Welsh models also do a model of the Vanguard. Now this isn't a model. This is actually the real aircraft. Um, but Welsh models do a 72nd scale model, but it isn't on general release yet. It's still in the makings, but they said that the kit was going to be released late in 2018, so it could hit the market any time. Um, I'll have the prices for that in the, the summing up section of the inbox of you. Um, but I've got no images of this kit for obvious reasons. It hasn't been released yet, but it is going to be vac form fuselage and resin the rest of it. And it's going to be relatively detailed from what I've heard, but it isn't going to be cheap. But we'll get into that in a minute. We'll just pan the camera down very quickly so that you can see what we're actually doing an inbox review on. There's the kit we're looking at. Whoops, my stand is a nightmare. <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. We'll just pull that forward a little bit. There we go. And that should be about right. Here's the kit that's in question. This is a Type 16 box. You can see the price on there. It was $10.99. I bought this kit about four years ago, actually from a model shop that sadly has um, gone it's gone the, gone the distance now, disappeared. Um, we'll open the box very quickly. There's not a huge amount in here to go through, but what there is in here is, is yeah, I've got a little bit to talk about what there is in here. Um, 
So what I'll do, I'll just take that out and we'll go through the inbox of you like we normally do by doing the instructions first. And we'll do the decals in a minute because the decals are interesting too. Now then, front view of the instruction leaflet. The instruction leaflet is actually A4 and it's in one of these white, black and red colour options that Hornby Hobby seem to like producing a lot of their instruction leaflets in. Um, these are quite common, they're not they're not that rare as they look and in, in German, French and English you've got the specs, the history of the aircraft and a bit of stats there and yeah and there's some information here on the actual sizes of the kit itself and giving you the, you know what you get inside the model and everything which is nice and then you open the page you've got some building assembly instructions here just like you normally get on, on the modern airfix kits now and the assembly icon instructions there at the bottom you can see them quite clearly don't really have to go through those it's like not teaching grannies how to suck eggs isn't it now then the kit itself whoops sorry about that the kit itself builds up in eight steps although the ninth step is giving you a representation of what the kit is, should look like and the first thing I want to tell you about is the windows. Yep, you get windows on this kit. Section one is to produce um, the port side of the fuselage and to put two doors into it basically. But part one is the starboard side of the fuselage. And inside the kit you have two bulkheads and a series of windows and transparent parts. Now, in the new release models, don't be concerned about these, because in the new release models, the decals are made in such a way that you don't have to faff around with the decals before you put the windows in. But if you have an early release model, like a Type 3 or a Type 11, I think there were, in the Classic Airlines range, or even some of the early Sky King and Mastercraft variants, these windows were a nightmare, because what you had to do... I'll just turn to the... Um, the paint guide and you'll see exactly what I mean. On the BEA variant and the Invicta International variant you've got a decal strip that goes down the entire length of the windows. Can you see that on the on the bill paint scheme there? And the same with the BEA variant. The BEA variant is, is a darker decal, it's not red, it's black. I think it's midnight blue actually but it might be black, I'm not sure. Anyway, but you can see that the decal strip goes down the entire length of the windows. And what you had to do was you had to get the two fuselage halves. This is in the early days. You don't have to do that now. You, in the early days, you had to... So if you, sorry, if you've got an, an old release kit, this is what you have to do. You have to take the two fuselage halves, paint them, in this case with the BA variant, silver underneath the wing line and white on the top of the decal line. And then you had to apply the decal and let it go off for a good six hours and then in the kit you should find a special tool which is window shaped and when the decal's gone off it usually takes six to ten hours to make sure they go off properly don't apply varnish to anything but you have to pierce the window aperture through the decal before you can put the windows in place if you don't do that you won't be able to take the holes out of the decal but the modern decal sheet have got apertures in the decal for the windows. So all you do is line up the holes in the decals to the windows after you've put the kit together. Awful lot easier nowadays. But in the olden days, these Sky King range kits were an absolute nightmare. Um, when I do the inbox review on the Comet, which, um, yeah, when I get round to it, that will be an interesting one as well because Airfix have, have now gone one further with that where they've blocked all the bloody windows and they've given you a decal sheet with windows in it which I was expecting them to do with an awful lot of their range but they didn't, they've only done it with a Comet which um, is interesting anyway, but you put the windows in in section 2 don't forget to weight the fuselage because this aircraft is a tail setter without 12 grams of weight I would put a piece of lead in there, there's plenty of room um, and then darken everything down before you put the windshield in place and then in section 3 you're putting the airframe together and the glass canopy. I usually put the glass canopies in last, but with the airliners, sometimes I don't, sometimes I put them in place now uh, so you can seal them up before you paint the airframe. Section four is the tail plane assembly and the engine assembly. 
the the, uh, the Vanguard was powered by Rolls Royce Tyne turboprops. They were a more powerful uh, ver uh, option than the Rolls Royce Darts. A bit more complicated and much more powerful. They gave about 50% more power than the darts. Uh, section 5, you've got the nose wheel and wheel door assemblies there. And there's a couple of rams that go at the front of the nose comb just in front of the uh, the doors there. Um, not sure what they're for. They're probably something to do with the ECU unit. Um, the ACU unit, rather. Section 6, you put the main undercarriage doors and uh, undercarriage oleos and wheels in place. Um, quick tip. Put the wheels in place. Uh, sorry, put the undercarriage oleos in place, but don't put the wheels in until after you've painted them. And paint the undercarriage oleos and everything. It makes things an awful lot easier in the long run um, when the wheels aren't in the way. Section 7, are, it's just showing you the option to put the doors in the closed position if you wanted to use a stand, which isn't included in the kit anymore. But again, if you have the earlier variants, they tend to be. And Section 8 is to finish off by building the air stairs. And section step nine there just shows you what the kit looks like in the undercarriage lower position with the air stairs in place. And you have an option on this kit to actually have the doors in the open or closed position. So you can have the air stairs in place or the air stairs well away. And then you've got the two options which come with this kit. You've got a British European Airways variant, which is red, white and black, I believe. And then you've got an Invicta International Airlines variant which is white red and silver quite nice quite like both of these two options but i'm only going to build one of them it will probably be the bea variant because i think i can remember the bea variant uh, when i lived in the south of england they were you know they were they were abundantly everywhere right the decals that's the instructions finished the decal sheets now then Yeah, the decal sheets on this kit is really nice. This is another one of Hornby Productions. I think Hornby Productions do good decals. They are. I've not had a bad kit from them. Even the new releases of the old, bot, uh, the old kits, the new release of the old kits, like the Douglas Dauntless I built earlier, the models, um, like the new releases, the decals are extremely good even for those. And this is no exception. You can see the quality of the decals. I mean, if I bring that in... You can see it clearly, easy to read, G-A-Z-R-E. Um, you've got some... Um, just trying to see. Union Jacks there, the register on them is very good. You've got some, I think they're crowns or something, on the back of the window decal slip strip there. They're really nice, very, very nice looking decals. The back end film is very, very thin. There's even a, a little white decal there. You can't make out what it says, but when it's on the aircraft, I'm sure you will. I think it says Vanguard, actually. It's on the Invicta variant, but it could go on the BEA variant as well, I should imagine, somewhere. Um, the decals, they're very nicely reproduced. The, decal, the depth of the decals, they're not very high off the, off the sheet. The backing film is absolutely crystal clear. You couldn't, you couldn't barely see it. Um, and the register and the finish on the decals is superb. Interesting with this decal here is that the BEA square goes off the edge and there's a reason for that. When you have the doors in the closed position, you use these decals here. But the decals when the doors are in the open position for the BEA variant, you use these decals because these little flashes of red will actually go around the edge of the door. What that will look like, I don't know, because decals are notoriously difficult to turn around a, a very faint edge and get them to stay there. But it is interesting that they've incorporated that. So the decals, quite impressed with the decals. They're quite, they're, they're very nice, very, very nice indeed. So I'll put this back in here because I don't want to, don't want to get them damaged. And then we'll have a look at this section here. Tell you what I'll do, I will cut this one open. I don't normally cut transparency bags up because I like to keep the transparency bag in good condition, but I think I'll take this one off and, um, and let you have a look at these transparencies because they're actually quite nice. 
my scissors will cut through this. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. I keep flipping that camera. If my scissors all keep hold of this, then it will be away. Right. <clears throat> this is a transparency. Let's just have a look at this. Get that shadow out away from the edge of the. Pop this up a little bit. Here we go. Here's a transparency. So transparencies. Now, when I built the airliners years and years ago, I mean, I have built a few of the Sky King range before, and the transparencies were just like this. They haven't changed in quality whatsoever. What they have changed slightly is in the actual clearness of the canopy plastic. Maybe Airfix have changed the formula of the plastic that they use for their clear parts, but these do look, even the windows, the window embossed parts of the windows there that go into the apertures for the windows, they do look a little bit clearer. And that windscreen is actually very, very clear. It is slightly framed. Um, so it should paint up quite nice, but it is very clear. But you won't be able to see an awful lot in that cabin anyway, because there is no interior on this kit whatsoever. There's no interior at all. Right, <clears throat> so that's the transparency. So quite good quality, nice and crisp, nice and clear. We'll have a look at the sprues first. Um, not much to write home about, about this section of the sprue. I mean, the wheels are reasonably well detailed, but to be, on, be honest with you, most airliner wheels, they're not particularly detailed with an awful lot going on on them anyway. The undercarriage oleos seem to be quite good as well. Quite nicely rendered there, I quite like that. But what I do want to talk about are these. This airliner is festooned with raised panel lines. Now, the real aircraft obviously would not have had those. They should be recessed. And on this kit, they're quite thick. They're quite pronounced. Um, tail planes are built up in two halves. So obviously you've got four parts for the two tail planes. But, um, yeah, I think they're going to need a bit of sanding down. And for all you guys out there who like to sand down and rescribe it's quite a lot of work um, but the parts themselves I mean when you think this mold is 1963 I mean it's it's 58 years old isn't it 50 no 55 years old sorry it's um it's stood the test of time they look pretty good there's not a lot of flash on them there's a few flash bits of flash on the tabs but on the parts themselves there's not a lot there not a lot to worry about there's a couple of little tiny bits of flash on the wheels but they'll clean up really easily. But it's not, you know, there's not a lot, not really an awful lot going there that's going to cause you a problem. This sprue is pretty much the same, the same again. Got a set of air stairs there. There's two sets of air stairs, one for the forward and rear hat, uh, doors. And the detail on those is quite reasonable. The steps, the, you know, the definite steps in there. Need a little bit of cleaning up needed to be done there. The front oleo on this kit is not much to write home about. It's pretty... Yeah, it's like a stuck strut with a hole in it. Um, the undercarriage doors are pretty, pretty flat pieces of plastic. To be honest with you, there's not a lot going on there with them either. Um, the propellers, they're quite nice. They're, they are Vanguard shapes, quite nice, and they're quite clean as well. Pro prop blades, uh, there's a couple of prop blades. That prop blade there is actually a little bit bent, but bowed, but it's not that bad. You know, it'll, it'll be all right. They look quite good. And then we'll quickly quickly go on to these parts here. These are the main wings. There's a couple of tabs need re re removing from those. And you're going to have to be careful when you take this these wing parts off that tab there because I would rather just cut that off and then trim it down, sand it down, finish it off and everything and get that sorted. But the actual panel lines, again, they're raised and they're quite pronounced. They're very, very pronounced, in fact. Um, yeah, they're going to need sanding down almost to flat to get rid of the raised issue of, with them but the detail on this this airframe is quite nice and quite nice indeed um, that's the underside and top side of the wing um, you've got little tiny holes in the backs of the engine nacelles which means you're gonna have to paint the inside of the engine nacelles that isn't going to be a problem because you know they're into the half not a problem. Don't need to show you the other sprue because it's just a copy of that one, and that is basically a copy of the other fuselage half. And there's an engine nacelle here, and you know not much to write home about those either, is there really? But there's you've already seen three of those on the on the other sprue. This is the fuselage. 
The first thing I notice about the fuselage is the tail fin is actually quite clean. And looking at this photograph I've got of this Invicta International Vanguard in front of me, it looks about right. It's pretty clean as well. Even the rudder, there's not an awful lot going on there. The rest of the airframe is about the same. It's pretty clean. There's a couple of raised issues. Well, in actual fact, that's funny because there's a, there's a ledge that goes all the way along the upper surface of that decal strip. And it's actually on the kit, but the lower edge is a recessed panel line on the photograph. So like the top of that strip is a, is a definite lip. And the bottom edge of that strip should be a recessed panel line. That's interesting. I've never noticed that before about an airliner. And there's a definite ridge there. Can you see where it's almost like the fuselage is double bubbled? Um, and that ridge is definitely there in the original kit, but that should be a raised ledge going underneath the decal line. And there should be a recessed panel line underneath the airframe. So all those people out there who, um, who want to get things absolutely straight, you should have that, re that recessed panel line Sorry, you should have a raised panel line, a recessed panel line, and a, and a very definite ledge. It's almost like a separate part that's not been on the, added to the kit. And also the tailplane on the Vanguard is quite excessive dihedral. It should, it should, I don't know, if, can, I, can I put these two together and show you? See if it's in the wing route, it probably is in the wing route. There we go. Yeah, you can see in the wing route there's quite a definite dihedral, and that is true as well. It's quite a severe dihedral on the tailplane, which is quite interesting because that's incorporated in the kit too, so that's good. So, the parts, they're not bad, are they? Not bad for a 60, for a 55-year-old kit. I think, you know, that's, that's pretty good. So, we'll just put that in front of you so you've got something to look at. I'll put it, I'll put it like that so you've got something to look at. There we go. Will that stay on there? Probably not, will it? There we go. And I'll just go through the bump uh, to finish this video off. Shouldn't take very long. Um, shouldn't take very long at all. Right, the model we're looking at today in this inbox review is the Airfix Vickers Vanguard. It's produced in 1144 scale with a serial number of A03171. The release date originally was 1973, sorry, 1963. There are decals for two options, one of GAPEL, British European Airways, based at Heathrow Airport during 1963, and one of GAZRE, which is an aircraft serving in Victor International Airlines, and that's based at Manston Airport in Kent in 1974. The dimensions of the kit are two and sorry ten and a quarter inches long by ten and a quarter inches span, and the aircraft sits three inches high on its undercarriage. There are fifty three parts on eight grey plastic sprues and thirteen parts on a clear plastic sprue, totaling sixty six parts. Now, one of the interesting things I noticed about this kit is that it actually tries to tell you that there's seventy seven parts in the model. Where is it? It's here somewhere. So, sorry, 75. Can you see that there? So 75 parts. I've checked this four times. There's 66 parts in the kit. <laughs> so I don't know where they got that idea from, but there's definitely only 66 parts in the kit. Maybe they're trying to include the instruction leaflet, the decal sheet, the two box parts, um, and God knows what else. I don't know. No idea. Um, but there's only 66 parts in total. Options and costs. The options and costs are quite interesting. In First of all, you have one 144 scale, and obviously you have the Airfix Vickers Vanguard. And now this kit, I have seen it go as cheap as eight quid, um, but it tends to be the new release kits that are on the second-hand market on eBay that go for about eight, seven fifty, eight pounds, something like that. But I've also seen them go for 70 quid when they're old and very good quality and good condition boxings. Some of the original boxings, there's actually one on eBay at the moment going for 155 quid, but he's got no hope in hell of selling that. But um, I have seen them sell for about 40. So, yeah, if you're after one to build, I would go for one of the newer generation releases. It's probably an awful lot easier to build it anyway. The former planes Vickers Vanguard, that's a VAC form kit, is about 10 to 20 pound. 
Welsh models do two variants. The vac form, the pure vac form kit is about ten to fifteen pound, and the vac form and resin kit is about thirty five to forty pound. They also there's two variants, uh, two different companies build the, this aircraft in one seventy second scale. The Gene Hooker models Vickers Vanguard is an extremely nice, well crafted model and can produce a professional uh, result uh, from this kit but it's probably going to cost a fortune as they were a limited run in around about 1980 to 83. Um, Welsh models are in the, the vex of producing a 172nd scale vac form and resin kit and I've looked at their website and it looks like the release price is going to be between 90 and 110 pound but they're still not sure 100 percent whether it's going to be under or over 100 quid. Um, conclusions. Now the Airfix Sky King, Sky King range up to about the late 1990s were always a little tricky to build but Humbrol Group started to release them with easier schemes like British Airways and Dan Air. Prior to this time the fuselage decals had to be punched through with a special tool before you fitted the windows. Not really that much fun at all. But the kit looks simple to assemble and the new decals have the window cut out so they should be a lot easier to work with. If care, and uh, sorry, if care and attention is taken, you can get a really nice result, even though the moulds are ancient. I have built a number of these kits, um, the 737. But the, uh, the thing you have to remember that a lot of the Sky King range are the earlier generation Boeings. Um, they don't do any Airbuses whatsoever. They, they only tend to do the Boeings and the British airliners. Um, but they were of reasonably high quality, even when they were originally released. They were the top of the line at the time. And even now, they do compete pretty well against the Revell kits, especially if you're after an earlier generation model. Revell don't tend to do the earlier generation kits. For instance, the Boeing 727 is the Series 100 variant with a short fuselage. The Boeing 737 is the Series 200 variant with a short fuselage. Um, I think it might even be a Series 100, you know, I'm not 100% sure. The Boeing 747 is a Series 100 with the, the very short upper raised fuselage section behind the cabin. And a lot of the other airliners, like the VC-10, they're all British airliners, but the, uh, the Vanguard is one of the few that I've never built. So I'm looking forward to this build, looking forward to it very much indeed, and I think it will be quite enjoyable and not too much problems with these new decals that they've released uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Anyway, that's the uh, conclusion of this video. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, if you've got any points, comments, questions, anything whatsoever, just pop them in the comments box under the video. Um, in, and any questions, I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Um, it's nice to hear from you guys. It's nice to hear the comments. I've had quite a few comments back in the past, and it's it's nice to hear some, some of the um, experiences that you've had with some of these old kits. And some of the uh, information that you've given me is, is quite in-depth and it's, it's very, very welcome. So keep them coming. I'm, I'm, it's, it's a good read. Um, I'll see you for the next video. Um, hope everything's going well. May all your projects are going smooth and I uh, hope you're having lots of fun. Bye-bye for now. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.